Uh, where did you go to high school? Hendersonville High School. Proud graduate of 1987, Bearcats, uh, once and always. Uh, and, and still fall on, Dean. Uh, I fall on in that uh, tough win on Friday night. So uh, they beat uh, West Henderson. But uh, once a Bearcat, always a Bearcat. And uh, did you play any sports there? I did. I, I played basically everything, I guess. I guess uh, I kind of ended up with baseball and football, but uh, along the way did some cross country and tried to play a little basketball and uh, just kind of enjoyed everything, trying to find my niche, but uh, it was ultimately baseball that's uh, that what I moved on in, in college. And uh, who was your coach? Was it Gary? I had two. I had uh, Ronald Boyd was my head coach uh, freshman and sophomore years and uh, Gary Rivers is a junior and senior. And uh, what did you do right out of high school? Right out of high school, I uh, went to UNC, well, played baseball that summer, and, uh, traveled around, played baseball during the summer, and then went to UNC Asheville, uh, where I played ball, and uh, went to class occasionally, and uh, eventually finished up there with uh, ultimately two degrees, but uh, had, had a lot of fun, and uh, wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. And did you play baseball there? Or yeah, I played, played baseball at UNCA under uh, Steve Pope. Went there to play under uh, Kenny Bagwell and ended up playing under Steve Pope. Uh, a little transition there, there right before my freshman year started. But uh, did that and uh, went after school and went and worked at the Asheville Citizen Times for competition as a sports writer. <laughs> and uh, then went to Morris Hill College as baseball coach and sports information director before coming here uh, and joining the Asheville Tourist Club. And gosh, I think this wraps up my 13th season. That's great. And uh, that's the next question was, how did you land this job? Well, uh, luck, really. Uh, Rod, knew Ron McKee from my time working at the paper and covering the team and also working here as an official scorer. And uh, Ron always said, if you ever want to work in baseball, just let me know. And uh, I was at Morris Hill, and uh, I called Ron one day and said, you know, I think I want to take you up on that offer. And he said, that's great, but I really don't have a position right now. So uh, he kind of created one and uh, put me in the role of media relations director the first year. Then I became assistant GM and have uh, been in that role ever since. And, doing a variety of different things from what I initially set out to do, but uh, it's been a good fit, and I uh, don't, don't have any plans on going anywhere. Yeah. And uh, describe uh, game day at McCormick Field. You're, you're at, Hectic. Uh, yeah. Game day is uh, just, just crazy, especially on a day like this when my wife's on the other coast in San Francisco, and you, you wake up at 6.30 and you get the kids to school before you even start that game day. But we're here uh, typically about 8 o'clock, 8.30, and uh, it's just getting the field set, it's getting the stadium set, it's getting the giveaway set, uh, taking care of your sponsors, getting all your ticket requests in, doing everything, setting up for the media, just, just getting everything ready for the game. So once the game starts, it's a smooth transition and everything goes off without a hitch. And then after the game, you're here even a few more hours. It's, I mean, it, it can be from 8 in the morning till midnight, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning. It can be a 15, 16 hour day and often is. And, you know, when you're talking six, seven, eight of them in a row, it's a grind. But it, it's a fun job. Uh, I want to trade it for anything in the world. It, it's very rewarding. You can have long days that uh, you just sit there and you go, why is this happening? Why is that happening? Why, why am I doing this? And then you walk by the stands and you know, a little kid catches a foul ball and their eyes light up and you, you think, you know, that's why I'm doing this. It's, uh, it's a real rewarding job to see the public come into what we consider our living room and have a good time. And, um, hopefully they want to come back. That's the goal is to entertain them and make sure everything goes off without a hitch and, and get them back here. And, uh... What, what's your day like when they're out of town? When they're out of town, it's more 9 to 5. It's, it's about 8.30 to 5.30 that we work. Um, it, it's a chance to catch up on things, to get ready for when they come back. It's here in the season. Or to get out in the, in the community and do appearances. And, and we do those on game days, too. That, that you know, when, when you do those on game days, that adds a little extra element into it, just sort of shuffling around that all of us kind of get out and do as much as we can in the communities. I was in uh, 523 schools last year doing appearances. It's two, three schools a day doing our Tourist Against Tobacco program, our reading programs, our stay in school programs, mentoring, career days, you name it. Uh, we're very active in the community. We volunteered 1,950 hours last year in the community and we raised uh, $532,916 for local charities. We expect to exceed that this year as the, the need for those charities has increased. But uh, So it's, it's, you know, non-game days are essentially taking care of all the things it takes to get ready for the game, uh, doing the sponsorships, doing the sales, just planning in general and, and out representing the team. Well, what, what do you do during the off-season? 
Off season's when you earn your keep. That's when you have to go out and sell. You sell the sponsorships, you plan the nights, you hire the people, uh, you just kind of formulate your game plan. But it's that's when you have to go out and, and you know earn your earn your stay here. Uh, if, if you don't hit your sales numbers, uh, you need to move on. So or you'll be asked to move on. But uh, you know the season's just long hours. The off season is really the nitty gritty, the crux of it. The season just really it becomes a routine. If you get everything set in place, it'll all take care of itself. The season's routine, whereas the off season is kind of your bread and butter. And uh, I know you've met a lot of famous players and famous people during your career. Can you name some of those? Oh, absolutely. We've been, we've been very fortunate. We had a guy debut in the big leagues last night. Uh, became the 501st Astral Tourist player to make it to the major leagues, and Eric Young Jr., who was just here in 2006. Uh, he took the place. Uh, they put, unfortunately, had to put Dexter Fowler, another 2006 alum, on the DL for sore knee. So Eric Young Jr. came up and got his first hit. And that, you know, you're kind of like a proud papa when you see that. Uh, but, yeah, you've seen, you've seen a lot of guys come up through here over the years. We've got 35 guys in the big leagues right now. But uh, I've been fortunate to, you know, not only covering the team and also growing up in the area. I came to games, you know, when I was a kid in Hendersonville, would come to games and follow the tourists. But, uh, you know, seeing the likes of Todd Hilton come through here and, you know, uh, Craig Biggio and uh, Kenny Lofton and, and present-day guys like Ian Stewart and Dexter Fowler and just – it really is. You know, you're, you're really spoiled, and to see that some of the opposition that comes through here, guys like Andrew Jones and Chipper Jones, and you know, just Josh Hamilton's of the world. Those guys, uh, you know, the Sammy Sosa's, you, you, you name it. Uh, just the guys that have come through this league, it just blows your mind. Uh, we call it the League of Choice, the South Atlantic League. That's kind of our motto. When you look at, you know, how many of the All Stars were South Atlantic League. Uh, alumni, or how many of the umpires, or how many of the coaches or managers all have South Atlantic League ties. It's over half of them came through this league. So it really is amazing. So we can honestly say we've seen the best in baseball. We've housed the best in baseball. And uh, we've got a pretty good team here this year, too. We're in first place right now by two and a half games with, uh, you know, winding down. And we we'll, we'll definitely have playoff aspirations. So uh, the good times continue here in McCormick Field. It really is. Uh, you know, kind of our motto is uh, memories are made at McCormick Field. You, know, you, you can just sit back and rattle them off, uh, some of the greats that have come through here. And uh, to close things out, I was going to ask you about some tidbits you might know about McCormick Field that other people might not know. Some well, McCormick Field, uh, one, of my, one of my favorite tidbits, I had a meeting last week with some guys about doing some NASCAR things next year, about uh, really, really playing up our history in NASCAR. Um, McCormick Field was built uh, here in the off season, 1923 and uh, opened up for play in 1924. And uh, when it was torn down, it uh, was the oldest minor league baseball stadium in the country when it was torn down. The oldest wooden sporting structure in America and the third oldest baseball stadium behind uh, two in the big leagues. So, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of history there, obviously, for baseball. But, uh, you know, in fact, Ty Cobb played in the first game here. And guys like Ruth played here and Gary DiMaggio and Aaron and Jackie Robinson, you name it. But from 1955 to 1958, we were a NASCAR stop. We were, we were a short track here. They, they ran around the infield, and uh, this was a stop. Junior Johnson dominated here. Uh, you know, Fireball, Roberts was here, Lee Petty, uh, Ned Jarrett, uh, all, all those guys. Uh, Ralph Earnhardt, you name it. I mean, just a, a great history of NASCAR drivers performed here at McCormick Field. And we're going to play that up next year because we're going we're to partner up with some NASCAR folks and, and hopefully some sponsors that we can really bring in some drivers and we can do some NASCAR nights and, and bring a little, uh, you know, that history back here and educate people that might not realize it. This was more than just a baseball stadium. Charlie Chichu Justice also played his high school football games here and uh, went on to North Carolina and was, I think, a runner-up for the Heisman Trophy twice. A uh, number retired in Chapel Hill and hangs there on the rafters at Keenan Stadium. I look at it every other Saturday. And uh, but uh, So, yeah, I mean, a lot other than baseball, you know, a lot of football played here and, and a lot of NASCAR played here, too. So, uh, you know, we're going to play that up next year and, and do some fun things. And uh, there's, there's a push right now, a movement to establish a Junior Johnson or uh, Banjo Matthews, I'm sorry, foundation, an educational foundation that will send kids to school to learn about NASCAR and how to get jobs in NASCAR. And we're really going to get behind that. So looking forward to that. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, I mean, my gosh, McCormick Field, it's been here for a while and I don't think it's going to go anywhere. It's still a, a great facility, a great setting and backdrop. And uh, it really is where memories are made.